you're looking for 10 tips to renovate your lawn in the autumn. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through my full autumn lawn renovation, all the tools that I'm going to be using and each step of the process. This is going to be one of my biggest projects yet to fully renovate my back lawn and I'm going to share with you my 10 tips in order to get the most out of your lawn renovation at home. The first tool up is the Iron Hill Scarifier that I'm going to be using. You can see on the front of this, we're going to be taking this down low and I'm going to fit the scarifying cartridge at the front. The next step of the process is I'm going to be using this Swordman Law Narrator. I've already done a full video on the different types of aeration, which if you're interested, I'm going to link that in the card above. After I've done that, I'm going to be looking at levelling the lawn, overseeding with grass seed, and all the links to the products that I'm going to be using in this video can be found in the description below. If it's your first time on this channel, please give me a thumbs up to the video and subscribe for more lawn care tips. One thing I did mention was to dress this whole project, I'm going to be using this uh, row lawn uh, product, which I'll come to a little bit later in the video. But you can see here, it's a lovely sandy topsoil mix. And this is going to go great for brushing in, filling out some of those low spots and giving a little dust over the top of the seeds. Just before we get into the first tip of the video, a couple more of the final products. I'm going to be using uh, the Lanzi spreader on the left and if you don't have one of those you can use um, a board and shovel to throw the topsoil mix down and finally I'm going to be seeding with this A1 Platinum Pro Lawn Seed which is a rye and fescue blend. I'm really excited to use this seed, it's got some of the top cultivars in there. So let's get started for tip number one. When you're going to start your renovation project, you want to be scalping your lawn down to as low as the setting can go on your mower. This is going to give any new seed a chance to compete with the grass. And also it's going to allow you to get stuck in there, remove any thatch and start your aerating process. Step number two is scarification. I'm going to be scarifying to drag out any of that dead matter that's been sitting on the grass and in the sward. It's also going to give the chance for the lawn to breathe if I've got any thatch layer sitting on there and it'll give a great opportunity for the seeds to have an improved soil to seed contact when I'm laying them down. If it's the first time you've uh, done something like this, um, you'll be surprised just how much stuff comes out of the lawn. You can fill full bin bags absolutely full of this stuff and you're really just dragging all of that matter out of the sward, giving the lawn a bit of chance to breathe. You can also use a rake, a manual rake to do this. And here's what my lawn looks like after scalping down to the bottom and scarifying at the lowest setting. Now it actually looks in most places still pretty good. It just goes to show that this is actually a really healthy lawn, but there are a few spots that you can see here that have struggled a little bit where they're a bit bald and a bit patchy. These spots are really gonna come back to life after we've seeded them and I can't wait to get stuck in and finish off the project. You can also see down the bottom, I've started to lay out some boards because I want to clean these edges up a little bit. Just running down here, this edge isn't too clean along the side. And also I've got another part of the uh, back part of the garden, which could come out by another half a meter or so. And that's going to bring us on to our next tip, which is around cleaning up any of the edges and marking out the area that you want to do during the renovation. I've just set up a bit of a wooden border to give me a bit of a hard ed edge to work up against and I'm going to 
put the soil down into this border and I want to build this up in layers if you're building up put a couple of centimeters down pack it in there and then top it back up with a couple of centimeters on the top of that you want to be doing this in stages just to avoid it sinking and it's better to put a bit down then compact a little bit more on top when you find your level we're going to seed all these areas when we do the overall seeding of the lawn and at the end of the renovation everything's going to blend in nicely and you'll never know it was there so you can see here i finished this edge and also i've extended the garden by another half a meter or so i'm just throwing the topsoil down treading it in and I'm using this spirit level as a bit of a screed just to get a nice level and finish off this part of the garden. In terms of the mix itself, this is actually their topsoil mix. Um, it does have a couple of chunks which will generally break up in, with the roll between the gloves. Um, I've also found some stones in this mix as well, which is kind of to be expected for a topsoil mix. But the actual quality of the um, loam is really nice and it brushes and spreads really well. If you were just going to do a lawn dressing only, they do a lawn dressing which is probably much more finely screeded with less stone content. The next step that we're going to do on the lawn is hollow tine aeration. I've done a full video on that if you want to see it in the description above. But here I'm using the Swarman manual aerator just to punch lots of holes in the lawn and this is going to help the lawn breathe, it's going to help the roots grow deeper in the plant and it's going to help to relieve any compaction that I may have in the soil. I've generally got type, a soft type of clay soil and this type of uh, aeration really does well to reduce the compaction in the clay. Taking me about an hour or so to do around 40% of the lawn. I go inside, have a cup of coffee, and then we'll crack on with the rest. Now, if you're using this type of tool, it is really important that the lawn is wet or moist because it's gonna give you a much easier time as you're putting it through. You can also rent out a powered tool or even consider getting a local company out to do this for you if you really need it done. It is a bit of a hard work. My lawn's around 70 to 80 square meters and this took me the best part of half a day, but nothing I didn't enjoy and it's all part of the game. Step number five is around collecting the cores. I wanna collect all the cores that I've pulled out you can leave them to decompose on the lawn, but since we're gonna do an overseed and try to fix a level of the lawn, I don't really want these cores sitting on top of the lawn because it's gonna stop me from getting a nice level and I wanna clean things up. There's a couple of ways you can do this. Um, I actually just tried to run the scarifier over the top of them and to see how much that collected. You can see here in the bag, Still some more grass coming out, even though we did a couple of passes before. But the bag is full of the cores. And it works pretty well. If you haven't got one of these machines, you can also use a rake or a brush. I'm going to do a bit of a test on these two methods so you can see which is more effective. But just use a normal springtime rake run it over the cores and it's going to pick up any of the other debris that's still sitting in there. And we really want to be getting as many of these off the lawn surface as we can. You can chuck them in your green bin or put them in the compost pile to reuse. Other method, you can brush them off with the broom. I actually found this method was probably more effective than the rake, especially when the cores have dried out a bit. I found if I left them for a couple of hours to dry out, it was a lot more easy to remove. The next step of the project is gonna be around leveling any of the spots that you wanna tackle. I'm gonna start by filling the barrow up, 
and moving the soil across piles evenly spread across the lawn. So you just want to bring the barrow onto the lawn and drop it in small little piles like this evenly spread across different parts of the lawn. Remember what we're doing here is try to see any of the low spots that you're already familiar with and we're just looking to um, apply a couple of mil over the low spots to smooth things out. Here's an example of um, using a simple method of using a board just to get a, a level. This is a particularly flat spot for me and I've even noticed rainwater uh, sort of forming in this little area. So I've just chucked a bit of soil down and I'm going to use a long straight piece of timber just dragging it in different directions over the surface and that's going to help spread the dressing into those low spots to smooth the surface out. It really helps when you've got a dry lawn dressing to work with. When it's wet it does clump and it can be a bit muddy so you want to be careful about um, buying some of the bags especially if it's been raining a lot and look for a dry day because it's so much easier to work with a dry dressing than it is with a wet one. After I've flattened the area off I'm just going to lightly stamp it down and brush it in and that's going to give me a nice level area and we can move on to the next spot. So I've got a number of areas on this right hand side of the garden and you can just see here I'm dumping little piles like we've done before and I've got my trusty board and basically using that board like I've just shown you dragging it along the surface and creating a nice flat level playing field ready for the overseeding part. So here's what the lawn looks like after I've filled some of the divots in. I'm hoping now I've got my uh, Alit reel mower which I've linked in the card above. I'm going to be able to get a really nice close cut on this lawn. Using these leveling techniques is going to allow me to get a greater and neater finish on the lawn as I'm cutting it. You can see actually the, from the amount of soil that I've put down I did still get a great cut before even with quite an unlevel surface but this is just going to take the lawn to the next level and get a nice flat surface. The next step of this video is going to be around overseeding. I'm using the A1 Platinum Pro Lawn Seed which is linked in the description below. This has got some great cultivars in it and I'm really excited to test this out to see what results I've got. I'm going to be using the Scots Rotary Spreader to apply it and it's better to overfill this spreader because it tends to work a lot better when it's full and I've got this set at um, setting 25 or 26 but I'm intending to do multiple passes over the lawn and if you're ever unsure about what the correct setting for your spreader is it's much better to crank it on a very low setting and do multiple passes that way you're going to get a nice and even finish across the lawn and you're going to spread the seed really evenly across the surface. Step number eight is around top dressing. After we've put that seed down we want to give it a light coating over the top and roll it down which is going to give a great soil to seed contact. Covering the seeds in this way also helps to produce, uh, sorry, reduce the amount of bird take because the birds are far less likely to take the seeds after they've been covered with the soil and it can also help improve the germination by locking in the moisture during the germination period. You can see here the lawn's probably halfway done. Starting to look really nice and flat can't wait to see the results of this video and hang on for the last two tips of this renovation project. So after we've put this uh, topsoil down we want to roll it. Now I'm using a regular garden roller here but if you haven't got one of these again you can actually use your lawnmower if that's got a roller on the back 
or you can actually walk that soil in just to tamp it down a little bit it doesn't have to be perfectly compressed you just want to create a, a nice firm surface with a good seed to soil contact the last tip is going to be watering you need to keep the soil moist during the germination period and you're probably going to be want to water in a couple of times a day for three four five minutes for the first couple of weeks until you start to see the shoots germinating for my lawn it's just a little bit too big for this sprinkler to cover it so i'm going to do three or four minutes on one side and then i move the sprinkler to catch the other side if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up leave me a comment below if you've got any questions and don't forget to subscribe to the channel where i'm going to be posting the results of my full renovation project coming up soon.